So today, we are gonna learn about the different suspension setups that are found in trailers. We often get asked here at Peak Outdoors how one system works versus another, um, which one rides better, why we do leaf springs on these camps. Um, so we're gonna go into it and we're gonna talk about the different setups. We're gonna talk about the, the leaf sprung setup as well as the torsen axle and then we're going to go into axleless um, suspension setup so as we talk about it you'll see kind of the difference in how they're set up why we use one versus another in in different applications and that's going to be the biggest thing is what your application is what you're trying to accomplish but hopefully we can answer some of the unknown questions that you have about trailer suspension setups so anyways we're gonna start by talking about the leaf sprung setup leaf sprung suspensions are by far the most commonly used suspension system in trailers today um, you've had the emergence of the axle suspensions um, torus and axle suspensions have been around for quite a while but this is still the most widely used suspension system and there's a lot of reasons for that one being the cost um, leaf sprung suspensions are generally a lot cheaper um, you can get parts and and to me that is the greatest benefit to the leaf sprung suspension is if i'm traveling across the country you know way away from home my tools all of that stuff and i have an issue with this suspension i can go to almost anywhere and find parts um, parts are just readily available for this setup to where, you know, pull the tire, fix the leaf spring or the shackle, whatever it may be, and I'm back on the road. Whereas if I have an issue with my torsen axle and it's not the wheel bearing, it's, it's the axle itself, um, I have to replace that entire axle. And the chances of finding one of those is, is going to be fairly hard. Um, I'm probably gonna have to have some downtime waiting for someone to ship one in or, or whatever that way. And so, you know, there's a lot of peace of mind that comes with running the leaf sprung setup. And it all depends on your applications. Like I say, how you're using your trailer. Um, if you're doing a lot of traveling on the highways, then I would say, yeah, that you would either want the torsen axle or the leaf sprung setup. But like I say, if, if you're worried about running into issues or anything that way, the, the leaf sprung is by far a better setup. Um, it develops more even tire wear um, than any of the other setups. But like I say, it all depends on your application. You'll find that the axle system is found a lot in a lot of your overland rigs your teardrop trailers, your light duty trailers, where the majority of the roads that they see are probably gonna be a little more rugged, um, uneven terrain where, yeah, that independent suspension um, is kinda nice to keep that trailer level and, and going over obstacles. Um, but, it all, like I say, it all just depends. We often get asked, you know, why we run the leaf spring setups here. Well, to tell you the truth, it all depends on, on how you set it up, what you plan on doing it. As you can see, this camp is set up with an oversprung setup, which means that the axle sits underneath the leaf springs. What this does is it gets the camp higher up off the ground to where, yeah, if you're going through some deep ruts and things that way, you don't have to worry about, you know, scraping your stabilizer jacks off the back. Um, it gives you that added ground clearance to make it to those destinations that are maybe a little tougher to get your average travel trailer in. Um, the other option we do is an undersprung. This next camp that I'm building will be undersprung. It will be doing a lot of traveling on the highway. So if you you can get that um, center of gravity down on the camp, you know, it, it makes it a little more stable. Um, you lose some ground clearance, but like I say, if you're not planning on using it off road, then you're not hurting for ground clearance. It doesn't affect you that way. 
Um, but that's kind of an overview of the leaf sprung setup, the torsion axle setup. It, it mainly consists of some rubber bands basically in the axle that create tension on your pivoting arm. And so as it travels, it puts tension on them bands and they kick it back. They travel really nice. They're a lot quieter than your typical leaf sprung setup, just for the fact they don't have as many moving parts. Um, the disadvantages to them is they're not repairable. Um, like I say, you can do a wheel bearing or, or something of that nature, but if you have issues with your axle, um, it's a matter of replacing the entire axle. Your timbering or your axle system is basically a glorified um, torsion axle. It just doesn't have the cross tube. And so very cool setup. It's very intriguing. And a lot of people look at it now. It's relatively new in comparison to the other setups. Um, but yeah, in the end, it just comes down to your application, how you're using it and what's going to work best for your application. And so as we spec out camps with our customers, we go through these different setups and we find out, you know, how they're going to use it, what's going to be best for their needs. But overall, you know, the majority of the camps that we build are with leaf sprung setups. And, and it's mainly for the fact that if they have issues, they're, they're available. So this is my Jeep that I've been building throughout the years. Um, this Jeep is running 37 inch tires on it. And so it's, it's fairly big. It's got a lot of lift in it um, to give me some added ground clearance to get over a bunch of obstacles and anything. But I'm gonna show you something about this Jeep that I think a lot of people don't think about in regards to their trailers. Okay, if I go to the bottom of my axle, my lowest point, I am just a little bit over a foot of clearance. Now this is gonna be my weak link. This is why I run bigger tires to get this higher up off the ground so I can get over obstacles. Now a foot really isn't that high off the ground, right? Um, let's go ahead and go in and, and take a look at this camp that I have in here and we'll see what the ground clearance is on it. And then you can kind of see where I'm going with this. That when we get, you know, a lot of people that ask us why we do axles and stuff on our camps. Well, a lot of it is if, if your truck can't get over the obstacle, your camp's not going to be either. And so your tow rig is going to limit where you can go. And so whether you've got an axle or no axle on your trailer um, really isn't going to matter if your truck can't get over it. So anyways, let's go see what the ground clearance is on one of these camps. So this particular camp has just a little over 14 inches of ground clearance. And so that's pretty impressive. I mean, I know the amount of work and money that it's taken to get my Jeep to the 12 inches that it's at. Um, but I think that you can see where I'm going with this, that if your tow rig can make it over the obstacle, your trailer's gonna do just fine. The ground clearance on your tow rig is gonna be a lot lower than what your travel trailer is, and so the axle doesn't become that big of an issue. Um, if it is an issue, like I say, depending on your application, there are alternatives to the suspension systems. And here at Peak Outdoors, you know, we, we wanna accommodate you. We wanna build your dream camp, and so if that's something that you're interested in, we can definitely do that. Um, we're just going to give you our recommendations on what's going to be best to, to fit your needs um, as well as perform the best because in the end we want a camp that is going to perform at, at the highest level. Well that pretty well wraps up our little spill on travel trailer suspension. Obviously there's a lot more systems out there, lots of upgrades that you can do to improve the ride of these suspension systems, especially the leaf sprung. Um, but anyways, that'll give you a general idea 
Um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and hit that like button. Thanks. Bye.